surge arresters. The electrical system is constructed of many different electrical components, all of which are susceptible to damage by electrical surges. These surges may be caused by switching or lightning strikes. Some studies indicate that there are more than 44,000 thunderstorms worldwide within an average 24-hour period. These storms are estimated to produce approximately 100 lightning strikes per second. It is believed that over one quarter of all lightning flashes will have a peak current magnitude of over 50,000 amperes and 10,000 to 30,000 volts DC per centimeter. Like man-made electricity, lightning follows the path of least resistance to ground. Electrical system protection should be designed with this information in mind. Lightning can be one of the major causes of component damage and system outages. When lightning strikes on or near an electrical line, it induces a surge on the line which must be discharged to ground. In a poorly protected electrical system, this discharge will cause damage to system components. Surge arresters have been developed to protect expensive system components from damage or destruction caused by electrical surges. An arrestor is a passive or standby device that is insulated to a specific voltage. If that voltage is exceeded, it is designed to provide a low resistance path to ground. As soon as the overvoltage or surge is discharged to ground, the path is opened and the arrestor resumes its standby state. High voltage surge arresters are divided into three classes, distribution, intermediate, and station. All of these classes have similar components and theory of operation. Each class is manufactured for different line voltage and current discharge characteristics. Distribution arresters are typically installed on the system to protect equipment such as transformers, OCRs, capacitors, and high voltage metering devices. Intermediate arresters are installed on main feeder lines where they leave the substation and at other strategic points on the line. They protect the substation from surges originating on the individual feeders. Station class arresters are typically placed on the high voltage entrance to the substation. They should also be installed on the high and low sides of the substation power transformer. This video concentrates on the most common of these arresters, the distribution class. As noted, arresters remain passive until surge conditions exceed design standards. They then provide a low resistance path to ground for the surge, which protects system equipment. Once the surge is dissipated, the arrestor is designed to break the path to ground, completing its cycle by returning to the passive state. An arrestor is considered to have failed if it does not return to standby after discharging a surge. This will cause a fault to occur on the line. The different ways that an arrestor completes its cycle further identifies the various types of arrestors. A gap type arrestor maintains its passive state by utilizing a gap in a sealed casing with silicone carbide valve blocks. The arrestor becomes active when a surge passes through the valve blocks and bridges the gap to ground. Once the voltage level is reduced, the nonlinear resistive valve block develops a high resistance to alternating current. The arc is then extinguished and the arrestor returns to standby. The metal oxide surge arrestor maintains its passive state using zinc oxide valve blocks. Under surge conditions, the resistance to these metal oxide barristers drops dramatically, providing a low resistance path to ground. Once the surge has dissipated, the barristers open the circuit and the arrestor returns to its passive state. The expulsion type arrestor maintains its passive state using a spark gap in series with a hollow fiber tube, which serves as the power arc quenching element. The spark gap is set at a predetermined value greater than the line voltage, which maintains it in open position while in standby. A surge jumps the gap, allowing the surge current a path to ground. 
The intense heat generated by the arc causes the fiber tube to produce a non-conductive gas. The force of this gas squeezes the arc, reducing the current flow to such a low value that it opens the arc, returning the arrestor to its passing state. The failure rate of distribution class arrestors is relatively high. Therefore, they are generally equipped with one of two types of isolation devices which allow the fault to clear. One such device is an explosive rivet built into the isolator housing. The failure of the arrestor causes the rivet to detonate, breaking the isolator housing and separating the ground lead from the arrestor housing. A lineman patrolling the line can easily spot a failed arrestor of this type. Another common method used to isolate a failed arrestor is the external air gap. The gap prevents spark over at normal system voltage. If an arrestor fails, it will cause a circuit breaker to operate, allowing the fault to clear. When the breaker recloses, the external gap isolates the defective arrestor. Failure of this type of arrestor is difficult to determine during normal line inspection. Arrestor installation. Arrestors are typically connected to the line in parallel with the equipment they are protecting. An arrestor should always be connected on the line side. This provides maximum protection of the component. The surge should be diverted to ground before equipment damage can occur. As noted earlier, more than 50,000 amps may need to be bled off to ground. If connected to the load side of the equipment, the surge passes through the component prior to dissipating. During the installation of a surge arrestor, there are three considerations which should be observed in order to ensure that the arrestor will operate as designed. The energized lead and the ground lead should be as short as possible. This provides more safety while working on the line and will minimize damage to equipment if the arrestor should fail. All connections should be properly installed to provide the lowest possible resistance under high fault conditions. Improperly installed connections result in a high resistance path to ground. This will cause the current to seek a different path to ground possibly through the component the arrestor is installed to protect. A minimum of one driven ground rod should be installed at an arrestor location. The ground rod should be driven a minimum of 60 centimeters from the pole with the top of the rod 30 centimeters below the surface. This inhibits arcing between the butt of the pole and the ground rod during high fault conditions. When correctly installed, a surge arrestor will assist you in providing reliable, uninterrupted service to the public. They protect expensive system components from damage due to lightning and other high voltage surges.